Hey everyone. So you guys asked and I am back. I'm here. First off, lots of things happened after the Blender conference. Um, my talk there was excellent. Everything went really well. And November was packed with, with clients, with projects, also applications and also manage, management stuff that I, I had on my back. So now with everything elevated, hopefully we are already in the same This year passed by and we, Christmas is approaching. And with Christmas, lots of things, lots of gifts come. So this is the fourth episode of Building City Series. Ser series that started three, four months ago and slowly taking pace. This is a, a project that I'm uh, doing on my own time and I'm taking uh, all the necessary steps to, to make it. Uh, as you guys can see, I have already textured most of the skyscrapers and the medium buildings. Now I'm starting to go to the small props. Uh, and after that, assembling it all on a separate Blender file. As you can see, uh, for organization purposes, I divided each one of the tiers in its own collection, as well as each individual building um, on its collection as well. Uh, this is important as so we can uh, append them with uh, as oranges on a separate Blender file without needing to actually copy the mesh. You're actually linking the mesh in a separate file. And for production, this is, this is very, very necessary. Uh, also, uh, I have a atmosphere. Yes, I built an atmosphere layer here uh, that will help us to break up the distance between the buildings. So to showcase a little bit, let me, let me grab the shader editor. And it's a really simple material. We are linking that directly to the volume uh, material output. Okay. And this is this is actually a cube. If I enable the selection here, you can see it's uh, it's the edible cube uh, <laughs> with a radial gradient mask, a spherical gradient mask. And um, if I change a value from dark to, to uh, bright, I can control the amount of fog um, I want on this, as well as the, as the color of the atmosphere. Uh, but the color is actually controlled on this node here. So you can, you get lots of uh, artistical variation and inside of Unity, you have something sim similar. And so I wanted to recreate that in Blender. Uh, using the volume displacement. Uh, besides the the atmosphere, I also created a a. Let me enable my branding here because I like my branding. Anyway, uh, the clouds layer, the clouds layer here, uh, which can also be controlled with uh, a slider, so I can make the sky more cloudy or less cloudy depending on the mood and also the color of the clouds as well. You know, if you want more a um, sunny or end of the day effect, the more uh, sunlight. And it's a really good, good layer. I actually placed that uh, on the original height. If, like depending on on the, the city you live in or depending on the on the ocean level that your city is located, you'll be on different height from the, the clouds will be on a different height. Um, and I, I created a lots of layers of, of these clouds because uh, actually what most people do is they, they just get a plane and they texture that plane with a single texture and you can kind of see that it doesn't have a a three-dimensional uh, look on that. So it's important that the clouds itself, they themselves, they um, they have a depth sense to them and they are stacked upon each other. Uh, it helps to convey the overall look of the scene. 
and also uh, a sky. But the sky, it's a huge sphere uh, that actually right now is casting shadows on the entire city. So I don't want that. So let me enable it uh, again. Let's disable this, these layers for, for a little. Now uh, I want to showcase you the window material that I worked on. Now, this one is probably what took me the most time in production because I really want to make something uh, uh, split apart from the rest, you know. Uh, windows like that really help to sell ArcVis pro pro projects. And if I click on it, let's go to material here. Let's go to room glasses. You can see it's a really simple material. Um, but... Uh, I was testing probably five iterations until I arrived on this state that I'm I'm happy with, in which is basically just uh, a mixed shader using a layer weight node to uh, differentiate, differentiate that uh, with a facing, uh, and mixing that between a principal shader and a glossy. Now the principal uh, doesn't have any specular anything just a transmission of a random value um, that I found interesting and with a IOR with 0 0.150. Uh, also, this is using a, a normal map with a mapping node, which I'm tiling it. Uh, so I'm repeating the style texture to convey these different windows. And I'm also using different normal map. This is the normal map I'm using. Uh, it's simple like, Eight, uh, four by four uh, squares with simple uh, bevels on here. And you probably won't spot it, but if I get a color picker with a RGB value, let me let me showcase. Okay, probably on, on a second time. If I get a color picker, this, this RGB value is different from this. It's really slightly different for you to notice that it has this kind of layout breakup on the windows. So some windows appear to be uh, more open than others and this, this helps break up the flatness of the overall look of the windows. Um, and this is actually a physical phenomenon. Uh, with heat, when heat uh, really heats the glasses, the temperature really goes high and the glass starts to bend a little because of uh, uh, inflation. Uh, it's a physical phenomenon. Uh, and this helps to get this little parallax effect when I, I get this here. Uh, it also has uh, this kind of room interiors that are mostly shader based. So they are right here, this node group. And then also using uh, a object info node right here, object index, so I can change the color of the windows real time. I'm dividing this by 10, so I have from zero to 10 values between a color ramp gradient, really simple stuff. And I can decide if I wanted more bluish, more yellowish, depending on the mood. And this is actually using just one simple material, but changing it depending on the on the building themselves. Um, also, I bought the Neon Gallium TV Animation Production Art Collection book with the original concepts from the '95 TV series, uh, and on this this book. They have the original Tokyo Tree concepts. And based on those concepts, I was able to, to draw uh, the original blueprint of the city in which the, the, the buildings are stacked upon. So for those of you that are not familiar with the anime, uh, Tokyo Tree is a city that can retract uh, based on uh, outsider traps like uh, kaijus, giant monsters, uh, you know, any, any threat from the, from the anime. And I think this is a really interesting concept. I want to make these buildings 
go up and down from 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 the floor and uh having this this original blueprint uh stacked together really helps me to to uh structure the city um after so this is it guys probably on next episode i will showcase a little bit of the substance painter process it's really boring it's nothing new but it's just just basically for adding these tiny bevel details, really simple details, just like gribbles, you know, random gribbles. Uh, so until next time, and see ya.